Computer crimes inside the corporate can involve things like email harassment, uh, falsification of data, gender and age discrimination, or any other kind of discrimination, embezzlement, sabotage, and industrial espionage. It is very important in the corporations, in the corporate environment, to establish policies, to train employees about the policies, and to make sure that employees know about all the policies that you have inside the company. If the corporation doesn't have a policy, an employee can expect to have privacy on the things that he's doing online, on his computer. The published policy in this case provides a line of authority for a business to conduct internal investigations. The clear and well-defined policy will give the investigators the authority to conduct any investigation inside the corporation. Displaying those banners that you see in uh, corporations that will say when, when you log into your computer thing like you don't have the right to expect privacy on devices or network of the corporation will help to avoid any kind of litigation from the side of the employees. Those banners I talked about before usually are appearing when a computer starts or when you connect to any uh, computing system on the network of the corporation. And what those banners should say that the organization reserves the right to inspect any computer system and any network traffic at will, whenever they want to. One of the things you want to make sure that there is a well-defined warning banner on each uh, system. Another thing that is very important within the corporate uh, environment is to designate an authorized requester. Who can ask for an investigation? What will you do if you are the investigator or you are the forensic expert on the company and a certain manager comes to you asking you to investigate one of his employees? There must be an authorized requester within the corporation because otherwise any manager who want to get rid of any of his employees going to ask you to make an investigation. Maybe you'll find something against him and maybe not. The slide here show you some of the functions in the corporation that can be designated as an authorized requester such as the corporate security investigations department or the ethics office or the employment opportunity office. The type of situation inside the corporation that you will be dealing with is abuse of corporate assets, especially the internet or computers, email abuse. An example would be using your work computer to have another side job that you are running. Now imagine a situation where you are investigating a corporate case and you come across something that is criminal. Uh, imagine this situation. An employee that is accused of misusing his computer and you are analyzing the computer and you find something like child porn on the computer. What should you do in this case? In this case corporations have to turn the investigation to law enforcement on something that we call the silver platter doctrine which what happens when a civilian or corporate investigative agent delivers the evidence to a law enforcement officer. Usually what, that, what happen in those cases is the investigator going to be involved in the legal team of the corporation and the legal team will handle the investigation to law enforcement. Now the last subject I want to talk about today is the professional conduct of the uh, investigator. It is very important for your credibility that you are maintaining professional conduct and that will include the ethics, the morals, and the standards of behavior that you are exposing at uh, the workplace. Example of these things is maintaining objectivity, which means that you sustain unbiased opinions on any of your cases. Keeping all of your cases confidential, that's very important for a computer investigator. Some of the cases that you will be dealing with will be very uh, spicy, hot stories. Don't be tempted to share those stories on the coffee break, on the cafeteria with other employees. You should always 
enhance your professional conduct by continuing your training there are always new things happening and you should continue your training all the time make it a habit to re record all of your findings on a journal attend workshops conferences and vendor courses as much as you can membership in professional organization adds to your credentials all the time try to achieve a high public and private standing and maintain honesty and integrity all of these things are very important for the computer forensic investigator in this slide I included some of the certifications that are achievable and you can get them with training and passing the exams that are needed for those certification I included also the link for each one of them in order for you to be able to get there and and have some more information from the website directly and here are another two certifications and there is more certifications to summarize what we talked about here today we talked about computer forensics that computer forensics applies the forensics procedures to digital evidence we talked about being a successful computer forensic investigator you have to know more than one computer platform you need to have your resources in order to be updated all the time with what's going on with the field we talked about public and private investigations that they are different we also mentioned that corporation have to designate a person or more than one person who is authorized to request an investigation to start an investigation we talked also about the silver platter doctrine which to remind you what happens if you are investigating an internal issue and you find something criminal on the computer then you have to talk to the legal team of your company and the case will be handled to the law enforcement and finally we talked about maintaining professional conduct to protect your credibility this is the end of this presentation.